Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Amanda Cohen. Amanda has, uh, has dedicated her professional uh, career to better understanding the threats modern businesses face. Uh, she is director uh, of GRC products, uh, responsible for the strategic direction of Resolver's uh, GRC portfolio. And uh, Resolver is a worldwide leader in, in risk and security management software. Amanda, thank you for coming to our interview today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Absolutely, my pleasure too. So we had an interview with um, Will Anderson, your CEO, about uh, one year ago, when he he introduced uh, Resolver uh, to our community, and uh, we also um, posted a blog post. So it was well, uh, very well received, and we had many views and. Uh, also a lot of listeners to this blog post, uh, to this um, uh, episode and uh, uh, viewers, uh, listeners and uh, readers to the blog post. And uh, today we will uh, concentrate uh, more on a specific topic, like uh, for example, we will talk about uh, goodbye risk management and hello risk intelligence. It sounds like a <laughs> very interesting one to explore. But before that, uh, Amanda, could you please uh, let us uh, uh, tell us a short story about yourself and your career path, uh, what brought you to where you are right now and um, what you've been up to these days? Yeah, that'd be great. So I joined Resolver about seven years ago. Uh, you know, I what sparked my interest in this space was really I had done a master's on anti-money laundering legislation, and I wasn't exactly sure where that took someone. Um, you know, beyond the academic perspective. And so as I was looking kind of for my career path, I, I came across Resolver and there was a compliance analyst position open. And what that allowed me to do was really take some of the things that I had learned from an academic perspective and then start to understand how businesses really take advantage um, of compliance and, and what's needed to actually build a program out. So it was great to take something academic and then turn it into a career. And uh, you know, since joining Resolver, I've been able to expand my purview and, and I've ultimately uh, become the director of our GRC products, which is, encompasses everything from risk compliance, internal audit, internal controls, vendor programs. Um, and it's been great. I think what's really interesting about being in the technology space is that we have this really unique perspective, similar to a consultant or a regulator, where we get to learn from customers every single day. And so, you know, we're not um, forced to just think about the problem from one perspective, but we can always bring new ideas, new perspectives to customers because we get to hear the way that different people do this across the board and then really build that into our product and make sure that people can take advantage of some of those best practices that we're seeing across the board. So that's been really great for me. And um, ultimately it's, it's led to this love of technology and how we can automate uh, the process of risk and compliance programs. All right, interesting. So, uh, can you tell us? Uh, let's go deeper into a subject of risk management and uh, uh, risk intelligence. Uh, can you tell us what is the difference between uh, those uh, two terms, and uh, why is it important to discuss? Yeah. So the reason we think um, organizations are shifting from risk management to risk intelligence is risk is not just the act of collecting information. Uh, we believe that most people want to do more than just automate their process. We think that there's so many insights that organizations collect that can help make better decisions. And so while managing risk is essential, we think that there's a more aspirational view of risk. And so ultimately, rather than just, you know, facilitating, you know, a risk assessment or doing control self-assessments, we want to help organizations amalgamate information from across the organization so that they have the information at their fingertips to help make better decisions and achieve their strategic objectives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you perhaps also explain um, how to leverage this uh, sophisticated te te technological solutions uh, to transform uh, risk management, uh, like from a, a burden or uh, probably a kind of um, a ticking uh, uh, points uh, exercise into a powerful uh, strategic and uh, asset, like intelligence uh, asset. Yeah, so I don't think it happens all in one day. Uh, so I do want to be clear about that. But um, I think there's a couple of phases of maturity on how you can build out your risk program. So to start, you need to understand how what's inf what information is important throughout your organization um so where can you collect information you know 
How do you engage with the business? And then getting really good at that so that you're constantly able to collect the information and insights from your business. From there, I think you can, you know, build a little bit more maturity in your program. And so um, what information could we feed in? Is there an integration that feeds in key results um, or, you know, some key risk indicators that would really help inform your program? You know, what's happening externally that's not just happening within your business, what, what external events should we be thinking about? And then there's the interconnectedness of your program. So if you're just thinking about risk in, you know, what is risk management thinking about or what is compliance thinking about, you know, you're not sharing those insights. But ultimately, if you start to have, you know, your audit team pulling from your risk program, then they're looking at things that are the highest priority. So having that integration between teams allows you to get more testing coverage. It allows you to um, truly expand uh, what you're able to cover. And then it's allowing you to reduce that duplication of efforts that is often seen when each program is going to the business time after time uh, to collect the information they need. If someone's already documented that control, if they've provided their evidence and it's recently been tested, you know, by your audit function, what's compliance doing looking at that when, you know, what other parts of the business could we focus on that are really, you know, that are important, but often get neglected because they're not kind of one of those top two things that we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. Are there any uh, maybe specific tips uh, for people uh, in the trenches that you can uh, share, maybe without uh, dropping names, or maybe you had some implemented some um, project that you are really and your team really proud of just to understand from the theoretical uh, view to more practical? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, we work a lot with financial institutions. That's, you know, generally um, where we see a lot of maturity in these programs. So I think that that audit risk connection is one of the main ones. And um, ultimately, uh, we saw someone that came out where you know, I think there's two ways that your risk information can feed into other programs. So, um, you know, particularly if, you know, one organization, they mentioned that they were going through this analysis, they were doing the risk assessment, and realized their vendor program really wasn't as robust as it should have been. You know, there was a couple key vendors that they didn't have the right amount of oversight on. And, you know, that rose to the top um, from a risk perspective. And then what was great was, you know, it, it, A, it kickstarted the fact that, you know, there needed to be more maturity in the vendor process. We couldn't just look at our information security questionnaire and think, okay, we've got everything covered because what's the actual reputational risk of that that goes down? What, what about the fact that we only have reliance on a single vendor? And so if their business is disrupted or if they're acquired, how is that going to impact the fact, you know, that we have this sole provider and maybe they got acquired by a, a competitor? So it's that risk insight and that collaboration that really led to, you know, building out a more robust risk or vendor program that didn't previously exist, and then implementing, you know, new controls, reevaluating the way they thought about their third parties. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you a personal opinion, a uh, point of view. What is the commonly held belief or uh, uh, kind of misconception uh, as it relates to risk management that you are strongly or even passionately disagree with? A common misconception. I think that it needs to, I guess, the. I think the business often finds that it needs to be a nuance to them. So I don't know that it's necessarily the risk function, but I do find that the business struggles with it. You know, as people come in, they're like, this team is always bothering me. And they're asking me the same questions. It's robust, it's repetitive. But I don't think that needs to be the case. I think if these teams um, across the second and the third line can work more cohesively together, you can really reduce that redundancy on the first line that, that's looking to provide you with information. It doesn't need to be a nuance. If you make that process really, really easy to get the information that you need uh, to inform decisions. And then if you work collaboratively and you reduce the duplication of effort. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, uh... Uh, so looking looking broadly into your own industry, uh, what are the major trends in your space that you uh, expect uh, will take place uh, in the coming uh, few years? And uh, what should we expect from you guys uh, as a company in the future? So I think we're seeing a lot more integration between teams. And I, I know I'm probably being repetitive in that, but um, a lot of teams were historically working on different systems. Um, and so there was a lot of disconnect between the insights. So we're seeing this real shift towards people um, looking to 
um, not just build technology, but think through their programs across the entire second line and including the third line. Um, that's been a real pivot where the goal and the program objectives have truly shifted to how do we get better insights and share those collaboratively. The other one I think is probably top of mind for everyone is how does machine learning impact all of um, our programs? So, you know, something that I think all GRC providers seem to be investing in in some capacity, uh, but I think it's really important because there's a lot of insights that if you solely rely on human analysis and, you know, the collection of information that can come in slowly, um, you might miss something. Whereas machine learning offers offers the opportunity to find insights that might otherwise be unattainable. We've seen this in a couple different ways. One of the ways that we've recently introduced machine learning into our program is actually on the collection of incident data. And so incident data we think is really fundamental to the way that you almost validate whether your control environment is operating effectively. Um, you know, that's a true test of what things are occurring in your business. And so um, you know, incident data is really important to be able to have a good grasp on what's happening as opposed to the theoretical uh, preventative steps that you're putting in place. So on the incident management side, we saw an opportunity to help make that process a little bit easier. So as incidents come in, whether they're a complaint, whether it's a security breach, whether it's a physical incident, um, to extract some of those pieces, that information out of it, and then be able to categorize it, prioritize it so that you can take action on things that really, really matter. And then, you know, some things are a little bit more mundane and don't necessarily need that attention or that investigation. And so, um, you know, it's not just the piece of being proactive. Uh, we think that that reactionary piece and then feeding that back into your process is really important. And machine learning has the opportunity to do that. We've also seen machine learning in a lot of compliance technology that we've started to integrate into our solution, which has been really powerful, um, where, you know, uh, compliance, uh, there's, there's technology out there uh, that leverages machine learning to collect regulatory information and make sure you always have the right information at your fingertips. And that's also a really powerful way to use machine learning. Okay, fantastic. So for example, if we take a life of a risk manager uh, in the company, if, the, if there is one thing that uh, they should start uh, to prioritize uh, right now that they are not doing uh, currently, what would it be from your opinion? I think it's make the process uh, to collect information as simple as possible. So uh, whether that's investing in some, some form of integration to feed in your key risk indicators so that you always have a pulse on, on where key risk events could occur, um, whether it's making it super simple to track those incidents and get that information fed into your program, or if it's the act of conducting a risk or control self-assessment. Whoever's engaging with your program their primary job or their primary responsibility is not to support you. They have, you know, other objectives, other priorities that they need to focus on. And, you know, while they need to be cognizant of what's happening from a risk and compliance base and a good risk culture will help facilitate that. Ultimately, getting you the information should be as easy as possible so that you can work off meaningful information and you can help, you know, move towards your strategic, move towards your strategic objectives and then make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe finalizing, if someone who is listening to this interview would like to walk away with one or two uh, major uh, takeaways, what would that be? I think, uh, you know, as you're, if, if you're thinking about technology and as you start to think about technology, there's a couple key areas that I think you should, you know, build alignment or, or think through. So one would be to think through your objectives and how you see your program evolving. Uh, so, you know, what your program looks like today is, is probably in a pretty good spot and, you know, you, you're thinking about it, but what is it, what are your objectives for next year? What are your objectives for five years from now? And so if you're thinking about technology, you know, finding a solution that doesn't work just for today, but that's going to help you scale. And that's going to help build the maturity into your program of where you want to be in three to five years, you know, because re-implementing something is a pain in the butt. And then uh, secondly, it's who else do you need information from? So if you're going to collaborate with people, who else do you need alignment with? Because doing this in isolation is only going to get you part of the way there. So if you can collaborate with the other key stakeholders, then that's going to help build your program out. And it's going to help you kind of find the solution that makes the most sense for you in the long term, again, rather than thinking about that short term. And then finally, um, you know, these things aren't, if you're reimagining the way that your program works by introducing technology or you're finding technology to help complement your program, 
don't think about the fact that it's just something that someone can do off the side of their desk. It's actually, you know, it, it's a big process. It's something that um, your team is reimagining. They're, they're implementing. It impacts the business. It impacts your stakeholders. It impacts stakeholders that work alongside you. So put the time and resources in appropriately to, you know, to reimagine this program and to think about its long-term success. Mm, okay, fantastic. So I, I ask this question to every uh, guest um, because I'm running Global Risk Community and we're a community for risk managers all over the world. So uh, how, how we as a global risk community can uh, contribute uh, to better understanding this complex world of risk uh, from your perspective? I think the more people are able to share information, the more everyone's able to grow. So, uh, you know, nobody does risk in exactly the same way. It's it's different, um, you know, across the board, but there's so much insight. I don't think there's one person who is a complete um, expert in this space because there's so many diverse perspectives and it works in such different ways. And there's such nuance between the way organizations do this. So the more engagement in global forums, the more people can contribute, the more people can, can help others learn. I think the more you get back in return. And so I think, the way I see the industry evolving is more of that thought leadership, more sharing of insights, because you've, everyone's got their own slice of what works and how, how to implement it within their organization. But when you, you operate as part of a community, I think there's so much to, to kind of give and take um, from that world. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, maybe I, I, that, that, that's why all my question. If I forgot to ask you something, well, maybe you would like to add uh, something to, will, uh, to what will benefit our audience? Uh, I think, that, well, the questions were great. And um, I, I think it's just really important. Um, again, I think that community, that sharing that feedback is really what helps us all grow. So um, if you have thoughts for me or insights, then I, I definitely love to engage and, and have more conversations because I think that's how we all become better. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Fantastic interview. And uh, I wish you uh, uh, I th I wish you a great success with your company. And uh, we will keep in touch. Uh, I think we, we have been working with your team for, for quite some time now. Uh, and they are prominently uh, uh, sending some information to global risk community. And uh, I hope to, to continue this trend. Thank you. Bye bye. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.